again, uh, like many things in life, this concept of late presenting lateral condyle fractures dividing into different zones, we owe to Dr. Tanna, one of the trauma cons. He asked us to speak on late presenting lateral condyle fracture. And he told Sandeep, Sandeep, you talk on early late presenter. He only knows what he means by early late presenters. And he told me to talk on late late presenters. And then we understood the concept. So there are early late presenters which come to you within six months of the injury. So this is a fracture, a lateral condyle fracture, treated in plaster. And uh, over a period of four weeks and six weeks and eight weeks, clearly this is not healed. So I want to know from the audience, you have two month old lateral condyle fracture, which is not healed at all. Clear cut non-union. What would be the management here? How many of you would do open reduction, through fixation and bone grafting? You treat it the way, you know, has been shown in the conferences. Nobody. How many of you will treat? Yeah. yeah so Negi will treat it, open it, freshen it, graft it and put a screw. No, some, there is a displacement, so some articular surface is in, involved. So this we used to treat in past with open reduction, bone grafting and a fixation. But if you update yourself and know the latest knowledge, your treatment will change. So this is an article published from Canada. The Indian-Canadian relationships are not very good now, but still we will rely on this piece of literature. And, and he said that if it's up to four months, they fix with a screw, percutaneous screw, without bone grafting, and they heal. Now, in our case, this patient was almost six months now post-surgery, but we'll say we'll extend these indications and treat it. So this is how we did it. This is patient's internal rotation view, no other investigation done, Dr. Negi. And you can see there is a clear-cut gap. Okay, we did an arthrogram, and that arthrogram showed that the articular surface was smooth. It was displaced, but you know it had a range of movements. And what we did was first pass a K-wire initially under C-arm control from anterior to posterior because that was the direction of the fracture, perpendicular to the direction of the fracture. Drilled it and passed a screw over it. A simple treatment, screw going from anterior to posterior having good purchase and over a period of time, at four months, you can see that there is already callus formation and by seven months, this fracture has completely healed with good range of movements. So the dictum is up to six months, fractures which are minimally displaced or are displaced but have some range of movement, at least 50% preservation of range of movement, you can treat with a cancellous screw in C2 without bone grafting or opening a fracture site. Okay. On the other hand, if you have fracture which is turned over, where fracture ends are not in contact, it is completely flipped over like this. This patient requires an open reduction and fixation. And here you have to take care that you see the entire articular surface, do anterior capsulotomy, see the articular surface and open reduce it and fix it. And your fixations have to be either with multiple K wires or preferably today with a screw. So we'll, I'll just show you a case where a patient with a lateral condyle fracture, which was initially undisplaced, presented to us when it got completely displaced. So this is something where articular step is not congruent. And you can see on lateral, the distal end is almost 50% anteriorly translated. This you cannot treat by fixing in C2. This requires an open reduction and fixation. So uh, I will just show a small video of how this can be done. So this is a real time video showing an incision. You need to take a long incision above and below the elbow joint. It's a bang lateral incision, but don't go posteriorly. You need to go anteriorly. And when you go anteriorly, first thing you go to is not the fracture side. You go to the pillar of lower end of humerus, subperiosteally go anterior to the mobile vat because that will protect the posterior interosseous nerve and from the normal bone slowly you come down to the fracture site and then ex expose the fracture site. You don't go from the fracture surface onto the fracture site. You go from the diaphysis and metaphysis onto the fracture site 
and very gently you have to dissect the, 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 the fracture site and you have to handle the fragment very gently. It's a small fragment and if you disturb it too much, it will lose its blood supply. Okay, so this is how I'm handling it using small periosteum elevators, forceps, you know, retractors, you know, uh, uh, cat's paw retractors, but really not holding it with a bone holding clamps. Now you can slowly mobilize this fracture. You can see that I'm exposing the fracture site, the fibrous tissue, very slowly I'm curating it out so that uh, the bone ends can be now freshened. But all this being done very, very gently. Once uh, you know you have uh, you know done your dissection well, the fracture is mobilized. Now slowly you can probably reduce this fracture. And for reducing the fracture, you using I'm using Alice forceps and multiple K wires. And using these K wires as a joystick, now will reduce this fracture. And once the fracture is reduced, you fix it with multiple K wires. And one of these wires you can use to pass a cancellous screw. Okay, so this is how this fracture is reduced, mobilized. You must make sure that this fracture is perfectly fixed well. You cannot have mobility. So multiple wires fixed here and screw ultimately and a wire, a wire parallel to the joint, a screw across the metaphysis with a washer and this fracture healed very well. So this was about early late presenters. You know, we, we said that fractures which are minimally displaced, you can put fixation in C2, but those which are displaced more and which will restrict the joint range of movement, you cannot fix in C2. You have to do an open reduction, taking care that the uh, blood supply to the fragment is preserved. Okay. What about the patients which come really late? And patients can come really, really late. They can come after three months, after six months, sometimes after 15 years. And I've got one patient who's 45 year old with a non-union lateral condyle fracture. So she came that late. And how do you treat that? So this is a typical patient who has non-union lateral condyle fracture, three years old fracture, untreated, but she has good range of movement. No pain, you know, little instability, no tardial no, no palsy. You know, the question is, should you be treating this at all? Okay, so that's why we need to know the natural history of non-union of lateral condyle fractures. So this is a 40 year old lady and she has cubitus valgus and she did not come to me because of elbow problem. She came to me because of a hand problem, tingling numbness on the medial side of the little finger. And this was the tardy ulna nerve palsy. She was experiencing at age of 40, 36 years after her injury. Okay. So this patient had good range of movement, only tardy ulna nerve palsy. Should you treat the non-union? So there are some more long-term, you know, sort of a, 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 a follow-ups from literature. 84 year old follow up. So this is possible only with pediatric orthopedics. You know, you cannot have this in joint replacement in fractures. Ununited lateral condyle fracture in a musician, fully functional. Okay. The second case report, 64, 60 year old follow up, lateral condyle non-union without tardy ulnar no palsy, fully functional person. So it's clear that if you have a non-union of lateral condyle fracture, it is not necessary that you will have any functional problem and it's not necessary that you should treat all of them. If you treat, do an osteosynthesis, open reduction, bone grafting, you know, this is a patient which has fracture has healed after a heroic surgery, but patient's elbow is completely fused. There is no movement and this has been seen in literature and this happens because the fragment will lose its blood supply. There will be pain, stiffness. And this is an outcome of osteosynthesis surgery for lateral condyle non-unions. Okay. So then if there are no problems, you will leave these fractures alone. Then why this lecture? The lecture is that there are some patients who do have problems. And when do they have problem? You treat the problem and not the non-union. If the patient has instability, this is what they will present with and pain and subsequent tardial now ulna now palsy resulting from that, you will treat the problem and not the non-union. Okay. So what are the problems? This is a patient who has good range of movement, acceptable deformity. There is cubitus valgus, but acceptable deformity. There is no instability. There is no palsy. There is no problem, no treatment. You just observe this child. You will not do anything. Counsel the patient that if this child ever develops 
unknown of palsy symptoms that time they can come back to the doctor and get it treated second situation good range of movement acceptable deformity no instability the patient is only worried about the the ulnar nerve symptoms and in that patient even if you just do translocation of ulnar nerve without doing anything to the fracture it will still be okay because though this is non union it is a stable non union there is no instability and it doesn't have to be operated if the range of movement is good there is hardly any deformity and these group of symptoms present with instability and when will the child present with instability when they have to use the wrist dorsiflexors for a long time and this happens when there is a long exam paper they are have to write with wrist in dorsiflexion use their wrist extensors which are attached to the fragment you know that there is instability and you can simply treat this by doing fixation in c2 with a bone grafting and these patients will do well you don't have to open reduce them okay now there is a fourth group of patient which will have a deformity which is unacceptable with or without tardy ulnar nerve palsy and this is how we will treat them so a, a lateral condyle non union with a tardy ulnar nerve palsy this me and sandeep operated at ganga hospital because in that operative course no one wanted to deal with this patient and that's why it was given to us a very small fragment significant deformity and ulnar nerve palsy so this me and sandeep operated together and this was our plan what we did was we planned to do a medial closed wedge osteotomy translate the fragment fix with a plate medially use the graft in the non union site and fix that also with a screw so that was a plan with ulnar nerve palsy so from the videos which were available from ganga hospital a small video i have made so this is what we did we passed a wire across the non union to make sure that there was mobility at the elbow and then through posterior approach we went we identified the ulnar nerve separated the ulnar nerve with its branches you know carefully being separated that's me and uh, sandeep assisting me for the surgery and then you go on to the metaphysis diaphyseal metaphysial junction open subperiosteally and open the site where you are going to do the osteotomy do the osteotomy remove the wedge translate the fragment a very simple plate here a reconstruction plate a lock lock plate which was used here so this was the osteotomy being marked on table and this is how we translated it fixed it provisionally with a wire and then fixed it with a plate and after this was fixed we went on to the non union side on the lateral side you can see a big gap and instability fixed it provisionally with a wire put the graft from the wedge and then passed a cross and compressed that without trying to mobilize the fragment too much okay so this is how uh, this patient was treated and uh, as we have reports from ganga hospital this patient has completely healed and done well what did we do to this 40 year old lady you know we did not send him to an adult orthopedic surgeon because i knew what i was going to do we planned it uh, medial close wedge translation it's important not just to angulate but also to translate this and this is how and this was fixed with a medial plate in this patient we did not fix this fragment because as soon as i fixed the fragment with a k wire provisionally the elbow movements were reduced to 50% so i said this patient doesn't deserve to get an osteosynthesis done because if we do the osteosynthesis she will lose the elbow movements so it's very important that you take care of that so in summary when you have non union lateral condyle fracture presenting to you less than 6 months minimally displaced you will do in situ percutaneous screw fixation and i have shown you steps of those how to do it if it's displace and open reduction and fixation through a lateral approach going anteriorly again i have shown you a short video as to how to do that if if the patient comes to you after 6 months if there are no functional issues leave alone if there is ulnar neuropathy do a transposition either submuscular or subcutaneous 
if there is cubitus valgus do an osteotomy if there is instability you will do in situ fixation with or without bone grafting and if there is a combination of problem you will do multiple of these procedures so i hope uh, with this uh, uh, you know you are updated in dr tanna's language about non union lateral condyle fracture and you will not make no mistakes in managing them thank you